In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to stimulus lists in the SMI Experiment Center. I'll walk you through each type of stimulus list, how to import them into Experiment Center, and show you how using them can speed up your workflow. With stimulus lists, it's easy to get a bird's eye view of the contents of long experiments and to A-B test experimental designs while still taking advantage of Experiment Center's graphical interface. Stimulus lists can also be used to set up A-B testing and loops, which we'll cover in upcoming tutorials. The workflow is straightforward. Choose a pre-built stimulus list example from the folder of provided files. Edit the example to reflect the design and content of your experiment, and save a copy. Then import that file into Experiment Center and refine if needed. Example files can be found in a Stimulus List Examples folder on your desktop after installing or updating Experiment Center. When you open the software for the first time, the folder will be created for you automatically. These examples were created to accommodate a variety of experiment structures. Composite element formatting, different stimuli with dynamic content, different stimuli without dynamic content, experiment variations, experiments with loops, and randomization tasks conditions. Let's open up one of these templates so you can see what it looks like. They're saved in spreadsheet format, and can be edited in LibreOffice or other commercial software such as Microsoft Excel. One important thing to note, stimulus lists and Experiment Center experiments are not coupled. Stimulus lists can just be imported into Experiment Center. If you change the experiment later, the stimulus list won't be updated with your changes. You can see that this is a somewhat typical spreadsheet. The column names are keywords corresponding to properties that you would edit in Experiment Center's graphical interface. Properties such as duration, AOI, position, size, and so on. For a complete list of supported keywords, refer to the Experiment Center manual. Each row represents a change in the stimulus, so here we'd show the title copy, then when the spacebar is pressed, the software advances to showing the first composite stimulus which consists of five images for three seconds, rows four through eight. The image files referenced here are in the same folder as this spreadsheet. In fact, all multimedia, such as images, videos, and audio files referenced must be in the same folder as the spreadsheet to be properly included in your experiment. After the composite stimulus with images, the experiment will automatically move on to showing the next composite stimulus, consisting of five text elements, for two seconds and then on to the next. Where there is content formatting here, such as the size and color of the type, that will be reflected as is in your experiment. You can, of course, tweak it further inside Experiment Center if needed. So you can see that with this spreadsheet format scrolling down, you can really get a broad view of your entire experiment, rather than having to drill down into each item within the Experiment Center interface. This is a great benefit to using stimulus lists. Once you have your stimulus list configured and populated with content, you're ready to import it into Experiment Center. Let's open up Experiment Center, choose Import, and then browse and select the stimulus list we want to import. I'll select the experiment spreadsheet we were just working with. You can see the data is brought into this experiment. From here, you can run a test of the experiment to be sure that it's displaying as expected. If not, you can make changes right here in Experiment Center's graphic interface. As you can see, using stimulus lists, especially for complex or long experiments, can save you a significant amount of time. This concludes the introduction to stimulus lists for efficient workflow in Experiment Center. For more specific instruction on how to configure and implement stimulus lists in your experiments, watch part two of this tutorial. For more details, please contact support at smi.de.